All right, guys, this is uh, Jacob from Why'd You Be This? And uh, I got another toolbox video coming to you here. Uh, I believe this is toolbox video number seven. All right, so in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about something that not a lot of people like to do, but it's actually effective. And, uh, of course, it's like any of these other tools. Uh, they're situational, and they're not, you know, they're not standalone. They're... There's something you do when the table is going one way or when you have a feeling of one way or, you know, if there's been a, a certain number of shots or something, you do these things, All right? So here's something that we'll show. And this goes with toolbox video number one, All right? So toolbox video number one was on the don'ts, right? So this... Do you have any more lines? Yeah, buddy. We're going to get $400 out. Okay, hold on, son. Say hi, Justice. Hi, guys. Yeah. There you go, dude. Thank you. Okay, so don't make a mess. Anyways, so what we're going to talk about today is chasing, all right? Now, I don't think you should chase everything. I don't think, like, you should Martingale style chase or stuff like that. I don't think you should do it on a consistent basis, but I do think you should chase don'ts. I, I do think that there's merit to chasing your don't bets. Okay. So for example, let's say you're starting with a $50 don't. You're playing something where you do 50, very similar strategy way I do, and then maybe placing the six and eight behind it. And, uh, this is why you don't need coverage. If you use this style, you don't need coverage on your don't. Like, so you don't need to hedge out the seven and the 11 if you're, if you're willing to chase it. All right. So let's say I lose, boom, All right, I lose 50. You don't have to chase full, a full chase. You don't have to go to a hundred. You just go to 75. All right. So if you win here, you won your 50 back plus 25. All right. So we're going to do that a little bit. We're going to, we're going to chase some don'ts. You know, so I'm just going to roll out don'ts. All right. That's all I'm going to do here. And we're going to, when we lose, we're going to chase. All right. So when you're going to chase, you should limit it. Okay. So you shouldn't just chase until the end of your bankroll. Maybe you should go, if you get knocked off twice, maybe it's time to start over. You just count that as a loss and say, hey, I'm going to move on and start over to is what I'm doing. All right, so here we go. Oops. That was supposed to be a $50. Don't, no, well, I rolled a seven. So, I mean, we're coming right out. I'm going to do show it. some more lines. Okay, buddy. Okay. If you need some more. You did great, man. Okay, so we lost that first 50. We're going to go to 75. All right, we got a nine, five, four. Oops, that was a five, four, nine. I was asked to be able to show that corner. I don't know if it's showing the corner all the way or not. All right. So now, remember, remember we're $50 in. So now we got $75 down against that nine. 10, six, four. I'm trying to make these dice a little bit matching on them. There's the eight. Six. The nine okay so we got knocked off twice okay so after this we were, we're not going to chase again all right so right now we're in 75 and 50 so that's 125 so we go to 125 all right and we have a nine right back okay eight Seven. Okay, so we got our 125 back. So we did lose twice, but now we got it all back. Okay. Drop back Your down to 50. Are Daddy. I know it. Drop right back down to 50. Here we go. We got the nine again. So our points made. Our points on nine, not point made. Okay, she wants some more nines. Five. Good job, buddy. Seven. Okay, so we won here. So that's not really part of the video. It's not part of the chase. All right, but let's just see. We're just going to see. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. All right. 
coming out. We've got a three. It's a frontline winner. I can already see where this is going to go. People are going to be like, I'm going to do that strategy right there. I'm just playing the don't. I'm not doing nothing else. Right, there's a six. Okay, so these ones, they're the ones that you're probably going to have to chase more often. Of course, when you get on the six or come out sevens, maybe, you're going to be doing a lot more chasing. Right, there's a five. If you get on the six or eight or come out sevens, just because they're more likely to get knocked off. I mean, that's not, that's not a secret. Right, there's a seven. We're just making $50 winners here, which is cool. And, you know, as your bankroll builds, as you're winning, all right, so we have a seven. Okay, so we're going to lose. We're going to go to 75. All right, so this is Chase. This is a tool you should have in your, bank, in your, in your back pocket, you know, especially when you first get to the casino. When you first get there, you, you don't want your first run of stuff to just end your night. You know, so don't so don't be scared to you know fight for your money a little bit. You know, you should always you should always expect to win. I mean, you shouldn't go there expecting to not win. You should expect to win. All right, so we got our seven. All right, so that's a, overall it's going to be a twenty-five dollar winner. We lost fifty, but made seventy-five. All right, so clearly the chase on the don't is effective. I've just shown it. It got knocked off a few times. Went twice even, and then ended up winning. Right, so clearly it's pretty effective. Right, we all we're almost up two hundred or a hundred bucks or whatever. We started four hundred, I believe. So just by chasing, there's four hundred. Oh, so we're almost up two hundred bucks. All right, so the next thing I want to show is chasing. Chasing a different kind of thing, okay? So something I see people do a lot of is chasing the field. Okay, so let's talk about chasing the field. So we got our 400 again. Let's make sure it's 400. All right. So when you're chasing the field, so let's say you start with a $10 field bet. All right. So chasing the field is not something I recommend. All right, seven, because you're gonna have to go further chasing the field. All right, so we just lost 10. So we're gonna go to 15, because we don't have to go to 20. That's that's one thing, you don't have to go to 20. You can go to 15, it's still, you could go to 11, you know? So there's a nine, so that's gonna win. All right, I, but there's gonna be a run here where we lose a lot of fields in a row. It's it's just the nature of it. All right, so there's a double bubble 12. Because the, the field's not quite a coin flip. All right, it's 44%. So there's a run of dice that is definitely anti-field dice. Run. And it happens. And so when you see people, I'm rolling a lot of field numbers. All right. And we got a three. When you see people chasing the field, it's not, I'm not getting anywhere right here by just rolling all these field numbers, so it's, I'm not being able to show it. All right, so there's a nine, another field number, of course. All right. And a 12. Holy crap, guys. This is insane. So, okay, so what this is telling us is that you should just play the field. If you just play the field, you're going to roll nine field numbers in a row, ten field numbers in a row. It's going to do that every time. You're just going to win every time. Okay, guys, that's not true. Even though I'm still rolling field numbers. There's another ten. All right. The field is going to have bad stretches. All right, it's the nature of the bet. Five. Oh, we have a field loser. After 43 in a row, we lost, okay? So we're gonna chase, which we're not chasing here because we're so far in the profit. All right, and a 12, of course. We're gonna get a double in the bubble. That way, we just keep racking up the chips. And Jake's strategy, our uh, 12 box videos, lose merit. Just joking. Okay, so there's a seven. We're gonna to go to fifteen and a three, of course. So, 
So we're, we're stuck on the coin flip right now. Definitely uh, even better, a little better than the coin flip. But there is a run of dice. Guys. There is a run of dice. There's a five where you'll miss the field multiple times in a row. All right, so there's a loser. We'll go to 15. And we have a five, okay. That was a five, not a nine. Okay, so now we're, we're in $25, guys. All right, so let's go to 25, or let's go to 30. That way we have a winner. And a six. Okay, so now we're in 10, 15, and 30. All right, so a lot of this profit we generated, it's starting to go away real quick just in this field. All right, so 10 and 15 is 25 plus 30. So that's 55, so we're gonna have to go to 60. All right. Get our hit. Nope. Let's see, so we're starting to work. It's the the numbers are starting to write themselves. All right. This is the law of averages coming coming back or and saying that okay, we roll a lot of field numbers in a row. Here's going to be a bunch of non-field numbers. Okay, so we have 60 and 30, which is 90 plus 10 is 100 plus 15 is 115. So now for us to catch our money, we're going to have to really start getting out there, right? So that's why I don't necessarily like a field chase. I, I don't I don't really like it. Now, if you're going to limit it to like two and then start over, I, that's fine. I mean, I, that's great. You're going to have runs like I had in the first part of this video where it just made 100 bucks real quick. But then you're going to have runs like this too. So let's say we went to the 130. All right, at this point, well, if you got that far into it, you almost, you almost got to take the chance and go just because you've already invested so much in this strategy or in this not in this in this idea that a field number is coming and you're just going to keep going for it. And you almost have to keep going for it. And there's your field number four. If you do get to that point, you kind of got to take your lumps. If you if you haven't already made you know, a cutoff point and you're just, you're just hard headed and you're just going to go for it. When you do get there, I mean, you're going to have them bad runs. There, there is, there is a value in aggressiveness. There definitely is value in aggressiveness. But anyway, so that's like a field chase and uh, it did pretty well, but we had that run of field numbers that was more unlikely than likely, I would say. And uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to down the field in any way. I think it's a plenty reasonable bet. Uh, I don't think it's uh, effective as like a last ditch effort bet. I, I mean, you're getting under a coin flip. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You might as well play the six or the eight with all your money. It seems far more likely you're going to make that number than one roll on the field. And uh, anyway, so speaking of that, I'll, I'll let me roll that out right now. Okay. So let's say you had $400. got four hundred dollars you've just been getting your butt kicked and the dice have just been rolling bad and let's say you're down to 75 bucks okay so you've just lost 325 dollars and it's happened in quick fashion okay. is it better to throw all this in the field for one roll or go on the six or eight for as many rolls as it takes to win or lose what do y'all think in my opinion okay so the six and eight are about 14 percent and the seven is 16 and a half percent. So let's say at worst case scenario, that's two and a half percent. Well, the field is 44 percent, so that means that you have a 56 percent chance of losing. That's quite a bit different, and it's the same thing. You know, this one up here, it's not a one roll bet, and this one down here is. So, in my opinion, if you're gonna throw a hail mary, if you're gonna just like, you know what? This has been a terrible day. I'm just going to put my money on one thing. Put it on the six or eight, guys. It's just, or I mean, or you could go to the don't and get the seven, and that makes sense too. But you have to go through a whole extra roll then. So let's just say we played the six and eight. In fact, let's say it's uh, let's say you had sixty dollars left. That way, it's easy for me. All right. So let's say you had sixty dollars left. All right. So let's see how many times the sixty in the field loses and the six and eight wins. All right. So let's see how much this, how many times this works out. All right, so here we go. Uh, whatever the, let's say there's a point already. And we have a seven. Okay, so both lost. 
So I'm just going to put their losses. Oops, let's just leave them. And let's just put a loss. Okay, so that's one. We'll put the other losses in black. All right, so black's field. White's the six. Okay, we have the six. So we have one winner on the six. All right, so when it wins, we're going to put a blue chip. And that would lose, so it's another black chip. And we have an eight. So that's also another field loser. But it is not a six loser. And a six, all right. So we have a winner there and a loser there. I'm, I'm feeling like this is proving my point pretty quick. All right, so there's a nine. All right, so that's one field winner. And the seven. So they're both going to be losers. And an eight. The field's going to lose. A nine. Okay, the field's going to win. All right, so how many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll roll two more times. There's a seven. So they're both losers. Oops. And one more time. We have a 10. Okay, so it's a, a winner over in the field. Okay, so out of 10 rolls, out of 10 shots at this, the, uh, the field compared to the, the six and eight, the field lost one, two, three, four, five, six, and won three times and lost seven, all right? In the same instance, the same set of circumstances. That's cool, so I put this on. It's kind of uh, it lost three times, the six lost three times, and won twice. It's which, kind of like a sleeping bag, sleeping bag. Which in the big scheme of things is very, is very consistent. You know, over time, that's gonna even out to six to five. It's, it's what it does. I right? So that's how that works. So that's why I'm saying, you guys, if you're going to throw some kind of Hail Mary, throw your Hail Mary on the six or the eight. It, it doesn't make sense to throw in the field. It just doesn't. I mean, you're, you're not getting good enough shot at it. You know, it, it's better. It would be better even to go and play roulette and play red or black or odd or even or something because, I mean, I know you don't have the double bubbles and stuff, but the it's just you're 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 not getting a good enough shot at it in that field anyway so this one was i wanted to talk about chasing and how I, I i like chasing i don't think there's a problem at all with chasing all right you have to have it under control you have to understand to keep it under control don't let it get out of hand because if you let it get out of hand that's when you get in the martingale type situations where you go through the roof and one bad run of the dice ruins your whole bankroll. And it's, it's, that, that's a bad feeling. I've definitely been there. I've, uh, I used to think the Martin Gale was the best strategy there is. And in a, in a unlimited world where you had unlimited bankroll and unlimited table, it is the best strategy because you can't lose. You know, eventually you're going to roll a winner. And if you just have unlimited bankroll and unlimited, uh, table limit, it's going to win eventually, but that's not the case. That's not how casinos are geared. People don't have unlimited bankrolls. And so the Martingale is always in the long run. Eventually there's going to be a run of dice where you lose. Eventually it's going to be that way where other strategies you can, you you see with other strategies, there's moves in it. In the Martingale, there's no moves. It's one move over and over and over. So, so I'm not trying to, show a martingale video that i'm showing a chasing video and they're different i feel like they're different you limit when you're chasing you chase when you chase when you have the money to chase don't chase when you don't have the money don't chase when you know when you are on a bad run already you've had two quick quick outs and don't chase after that you know don't start chasing then it doesn't make that, that's you know don't make a bad thing worse but chasing can be an effective tool. You know, you just get there. You throw 50 on the don't. Do pops come out seven. Throw 75 down there. Most likely he's going to hit a point. You might get your money back right then. Even if he goes again and, and smacks a seven or 11 again, you know, chase one more time. 
the odds of him knocking you off three in a row aren't very good. All right, the probability of the it's, it's more it's less probability because probability is set in stone. It's likelihood, likelihood and probability are different. Okay, right? and so then it's going to go and you're, and I mean most likely at that point you're probably going to win and you're probably going to win that bet. You know, so chasing's okay in certain situations, and that's what I'm trying to show here, and how it can be an effective tool when you're using the don'ts. Uh, I don't think it's as effective on the light side because if you if you're chasing on the light side you have to chase so big and so like for example a chasing light side strategy is uh, that Kaufman strategy the 44 strategy where you have to have a bankroll big enough to cover four losses on all the place bets and then you have to chase it every time well if you go four I mean don't get me wrong, that strategy can work and it's going to work a whole bunch of the time. But, you know, the one time it doesn't work is so crazy bad that it, I just, the light side chasing isn't as, is not as effective as chasing the don'ts. And so, in my opinion, I suggest, and I would, uh, I'll put, I'll put my word behind chasing the don'ts. I, I'm not going to really vouch for chasing the light side bets. I, I don't, I actually don't think you should do it. But if you do it, you know, just keep it under control. But uh, definitely, I'm, I'm okay with chasing the don'ts. I think it's a good play. Uh, I'm o I'm okay with chasing the field, but you definitely have to limit it, in, you know, to one or two, you know, or two losses or three losses. Don't go any further than that. I just feel like it's going to run away one time and get you. So, I definitely... You know, I, I would be willing to chase the don't all the way up to four losses if I had the bankroll to cover it. But I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be willing to chase the field up to four losses. I, I don't, I just don't think the, the value's there. Anyways, this is Jacob from Wager the Me This, and uh, this is Toolbox video number six. I really appreciate you guys on these Toolbox videos and all this feedback I'm getting. And everyone keeps shooting your shots at me. I mean, I love that stuff. Tell me what you think. Tell me, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm completely okay if you want to say, hey, man, you know, what you did on the table, it, it don't work. You know, I don't think it works. That's cool. I want your opinions. I, I want I want what you guys know. You know, I want to know that stuff. So, you know, if you think something I put out there is garbage, let me know, man. And uh, I definitely want to talk to you about it, why you think it's garbage, because, heck, you might know something I don't know. And so, I mean, there's a high likelihood you do. So, Anyways, this is uh, Jacob from Wedge Me This. I hope you guys like this video. Thanks for all y'all support. See ya. Good night.